take you now to the lineup. you off duty. Well, I'm supposed to be, Quan, but we're checking on the 211 when we get down in the morgue. Oh, no identification? Not yet. Be another hour or so. Thought I'd stop in and see what you got. Uh, nothing big. About 35 boys. Well, I got nothing to do until we get an identification. Oh, there's Matt. Hey, I, I better help. Attention, please? Yeah, I'll see you later. Right. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> Thank you. My name is Greb. Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number of their name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identification, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. Okay, keep it moving right over to the end of the stage. Hands to your sides. Now turn and face front. Okay, boys, now when you answer my questions, talk up. There's a lot of people out there, and I want you to talk up so they can all hear you. All right, number one, Thomas Lane, breaking and entering. Where do you live, Tommy? 3112 Kennedy, upstairs. Don't look at me, Tommy. Look straight ahead, right out at the people there. Yes, sir. You live at 3112 Kennedy, north, south, or what? 3112 South Kennedy. You live alone? No, sir, with my folks. What? With my folks. I know the people out in front can't hear you. Now, come on, talk up. I said I live with my folks. That's better, Tommy. You were arrested with anybody? No, sir. Any weapons? Oh, no, sir. I didn't have any weapons. What uh-huh. time was yeah. it? Yeah, that's when him, officer. Yes, yeah, what time was it? Identification back then. Know. Oh, that's Mrs. Kirk. Maybe 10.30? Nice. Where was it? Yes, yes Mrs. Mrs. Kirk. Number one. That's the boy. Holy okay, Tommy. we'll have him held at the end of the line. Okay, number two, Frank Lazo, assault. Where do you live, Frank? 913 South Orchard Street. What do you do? I'm a commander. What were you doing when you were arrested? I was fighting. I was in a bar fighting. Did you start it? No, Sergeant. Some guy hit a sailor just up and slugged him. Well, who did you hit? The guy that hit the sailor. I got sore when he hit him, so I dropped him. What'd you drop him with? A painted machine. He didn't have no business hitting that sailor. The sailor wasn't doing nothing but having a good time. The man you slugged said the sailor started. Look, I was standing right there, Sergeant. The sailor wasn't doing nothing. Standing there having a beer, minding his own business. The guy I slugged started the whole thing. Would have wanted. You know the sailor? Yeah, sure. He's my brother. <laughs> okay, number three, Dennis Riley, drunk and disorderly. Where do you live, Dennis? 214 North Peck Apartment C, Sergeant. What do you do? Uh, I'm kind of out of work. I ain't been doing nothing for a while now. You married? Sure, what do you think I'm here for? Because you and three other guys caused some trouble. Well, I had a small party, Sergeant. My wife's out of town. I can't do nothing when she's home, so I had a party. Well, you got pretty drunk. Oh, not too much. How long were you drinking? About 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, George Watson, robbery. Where do you live, George? 440 Federal Street. Are you arrested with anybody? No. Ben. Any weapon? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, 38 a minute. Sure. Well, what is it? Nickel plated? Blue steel or what? Blue steel. What's up? We got something on that 211. Identification? Well, not yet, but I've got an old tramp downstairs. Says he saw the man killed. Now, this is Sam Rogers, Ben. <laughs> Old Sam, they call me. Keep your seat, Sam. <laughs> yes, yes. Sam says he was in a culvert near the shore road. Yeah, just keeping out of the rain. Man. He uh, saw a car pull off the side and heard a shot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, tell me about it, Sam. Well, ain't much to tell. Man get out of the car. 
This was after the shot, of course. He got out and grabbed the man's legs and dragged him out of the car. Bumpity bump. Oh, he swung him off the road so hard he rolled on down that hill. Just over and over. And I just stayed in there watching him roll just over and over. You see the man who pulled this guy out of the car and rolled him down the hill? Oh, yes. I saw him. He had to drag this dead fellow right in front of the headlights to get him over the, to the hill there. I saw him kind of clear there in the headlights. And... How'd you know the fellow was dead? You got him down the morgue, ain't you? You know he was dead when this man rolled him down the hill? Oh, I didn't stick around and find out. <laughs> Took me all this time to get up enough nerve to come in here. So I just kind of walked around thinking about it. And figured I'd better tell you about it. Well, we're glad you did. You couldn't fix me up with a meal, could you? Guthrie. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. Okay, give it to me. Russell Godfrey, 311, Kirby Road. Okay, right. That's the identification. Russell Godfrey, 311, Kirby Road. Is that the dead fellow? That's right, Sam. I should fix Sam up with a meal and give him a bed. Well, I ain't tired. No, I'm hungry, but I ain't tired. You got any money? What kind of money? You can have the run of the place. You won't mind it. Okay, but I won't like it. I shall have nightmares, sure. I can sure do without this rain. We need it. Yeah. Well, come on, let's get it over with. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Somebody ought to try to figure out a waterproof cigarette. Russell? Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I was expecting my husband. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, Mrs. Godfrey. Lieutenant? And this is Sergeant Greb. Police? That's right. Something's happened. May we Russell? come in? Yeah, of course. Mrs. Godfrey, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Question? Yes. Your husband was shot. Oh, no. Now, there's no other way of telling you this. Oh. We've got to tell you the truth. You mean someone killed him? Yes, ma'am. Someone shot him. Oh. oh. Mrs. Godfrey. <laughs> Mrs. Godfrey, do you have any friends or a member of the family you'd like us to call? My mother. Yeah, call my mother. What's the number, Mrs. Godfrey? Mrs. Klein, Madison, 33446. Mrs. Klein, Madison, 33446? Yes, yes. The phone's in the hall, that door. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry, but it's such a terrible shock. You think you could answer just a couple of questions and we won't bother you for a while? I'll try. We found your husband out on the shore road. He comes home from work that way. Somebody drive him? He have his own car? Oh, yes. He has his own car. Where does he work? He works for Mr. Martin, the Martin Lyons Printing Corporation. He's a salesman. Martin Lyons Printing Corporation? Yeah, that's on the east side, about 45 minutes from here. Uh, what time does he usually get home? About six. Usually about six. I've been worried because I didn't hear from him. I even called the office, but they said he left. Why would anybody want it? Your mother's on the way, Ben. <laughs> he was in his own car, man. Oh? Hitchhiker, maybe? Maybe. Why don't you stretch out on the couch, Mrs. Godfrey? Your mother will be right over. All right. Hey, throw that cover over her, man. Sure, sure. There. Now, you okay, Mrs. Godfrey? Yes, thanks. A man? Yeah. As soon as the mother gets here, we'll check on what kind of car he was driving. Put out an APB. Yeah, okay, Ben. And tomorrow morning, I want to go down to the Martin Lyons Printing Company where he worked. Okay. Cigarette? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Miserable rain. Yeah. We needed it, though. Mr. 
Guthrie? Yes, Mr. Martin. This is Sergeant Graham. Sergeant? How are you, sir? Uh, won't you have a seat? Well, thank you. Now then, what can I do for you? You have a man working for you named Godfrey. Russell Godfrey? Yeah. Nothing wrong? He was killed last night. What? Someone shot him. Took his car. Good grief. Shot him? Deliberately? Very deliberately. I walked downstairs with him, said goodnight. What about his wife? She took it pretty well. He didn't drive away with anybody? No, no, he, he was alone. At least he was when he left me. Have you any idea why anybody would want to kill him? No, I certainly don't. Did he have much money on him? I couldn't say. Any valuables? Anything of value from your company? Well, he had a briefcase. Briefcase? Yes, threw it in the front seat with him. We talked for a minute. Then it started to rain. Have you any idea what was in the briefcase? Just the kit, all our sales force shoes, sample forms, cards, checks. And what kind of checks? They wouldn't do anybody any good. They'd need the payee's name. Uh, here, I'll show you one. Uh-huh. Uh, besides the signature, they'd, they'd need to be signed by the officers of the various companies whose signatures are acceptable to the paying banks. You mean you print these up for a lot of firms? Hundreds of firms. Each have their own color, markings, and uh, so on. I see. Well, uh, who could cash these checks beside the banks? Uh, I mean, uh, don't they have regular check cashing services? Oh, yes. There are a number of them in the city. Lieutenant, you don't think Godfrey was killed for these checks? Yes, I do. There are a lot of people who work pretty hard trying to make crime pay off. Had enough, then? Enough? <laughs> Up to here, Molly. Coffee? Yeah, if there won't be any trouble. Don't be silly. I'll help, honey. Oh, you have a cigarette. Now, look, now look, Molly. We'll do the dishes tonight. You'll both sit right there and oh, relax. For Pete's sake. You like to eat over here? But how many times? Have a cigarette. Relax, Ben. You're out class. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is no trouble for me at all. Ah, wonderful dinner, Molly. You can come again. Thanks, Matt. Hmm? We ought to help one night. Oh, I help plenty of nights. What do you think I asked you over for? I heard that. Oh, you did, huh? Yes, I did. Huh? <laughs> uh, the cream on the table? No, no, the sugar is, though. Honey, do you want to have coffee in the other room? You want to. Fights are on, Ben. Sure. Yeah, we'll have it in the other room, honey. Okay, you go on. I'll bring it in. Uh, it's nearly eight and they started, eh? Uh, sit over there, Ben. <laughs> Always guarding your chair, huh, man? Oh, no, Ben. You <laughs> That's know. okay. It's okay. I was joking. Right yeah. us. Who's no fighting? Some of the I best don't know. Players in the game. Second bout of the evening features. Oh, gee, they And here they are in the ring. Early. Features Wilbur Jones and John Montague, lightweight. Is that loud enough, Montague's Ben? Montague's had 11 uh, A little more. Here. Lost three, won six by knockout. Okay. Jones had 12, okay. lost yep. two, and won five by knockout. Well, the fight's on. And there's Jones with a long left. Montague takes it on his elbow and counters with his own left, high on the head of Jones. Yes? Both Jones and Montague have yes. always been crowd pleasers. Ben, for you. No, Ben. It's the precinct. Oh, thanks, Molly. And Montague takes the Hello, this is Guthrie. Right. Both of these boys yeah. have got a lot of respect for each other, and they're staying away. Yeah, all right, Quine. We'll be right down. Better hold the coffee, honey. I just I poured it back in the pot. Hello, Ben. Sorry to drag you out. No, that's okay, Quinn. This is Mr. Webb, Lieutenant Guthrie, Sergeant Greb. Oh, Hello, Mr. Webb. Mr. Webb is president of the firm whose name was cut into the checks. Oh, just one check cashed? That's right, Lieutenant, yes. Here it is, Ben. Uh-huh. And which one of you men cashed the check? Uh, we questioned the teller. He doesn't remember the man too well. Thinks he might identify him if he saw him again. Uh, made out to Arthur Fisher. No one on your payroll by that name, Mr. Webb? No, no, sir. It isn't. $258. Deductions and everything. He did a good job. Yeah, too good. Somebody's certainly familiar with Mr. Webb's business. We're running a check on all the employees. Uh -huh. Have you seen Mr. Martin, who prints these? Yeah, we're doing the same with all the employees in his shop. 
How'd you spot this as a phony? Well, Baxter's a check cashing service called me. Baxter had read about that man being killed and the check stolen. He knew our payday and remembered it wasn't today, and so Mr. Baxter called me. Oh, whoever cashed that thing certainly got careless. Doesn't look like it was planned so well after all. It doesn't make sense. Looks like a perfect forgery. But to make a mistake of cashing it on the wrong day. He might, have, he might have gotten away with it if he'd gone in with a lot of other checks. Yeah, sure something. Oh, excuse me. Why? Yeah, he's right here. See you back. Hey. Got me. Yeah? Yeah, where? Okay, right. Got Godfrey's stolen car spotted. Parking lot on West Colfax. <laughs> Asher. Car's right over here, Ben. You want to talk to the attendant? Yeah. Briggs? Yes, sir? How long ago did the man park that car? About 20 minutes. Officer on the beat spotted it. Mm. Just one man, son? Yes, sir, just one man. He told me to watch it because there was some suitcases in it. Three of them. Some maps in the glove compartment. Mm, taking a trip. Mm. Might explain why that check was cashed on the wrong day. Let's go take a look. Mister? Yeah? That's him. Here he comes. Now don't point. He spotted us, Ben. He's running. Asher, run that way. He's behind those cars. Look out. He's got a gun. Circle that way, Matt. Right. Come on, give it up. You're surrounded. You can't make it. Throw your gun out. Okay, blow him up. Ben. Yeah? Enough staying in the tank, but coming down here. Yeah, well, uh, we need an identification, Sam. <laughs> Did I get it? We want to know if this is the man you saw pull the other one out of the car and roll him down the hill. Yeah, okay. Roll it out, Charlie. Driver's license in the wallet. Name's Bishop, Frank Bishop. Check the files, no package on him. And what about the FBI? Oh, we're waiting for a kickback now. Mm. Yeah. Nothing much here. No. How do you think he figures? No guy's gonna pull a gun like that unless he's mixed up in something that might get him a lot of years. You want to check that address on the license? Seven, seven, eight and a half North Spring. Yeah, let... Wait a minute. What's the matter, Ben? That address... What about it? Funny. That address, it's familiar. Now, where the devil have I seen it? Seven, seven, eight and a half North Spring? Doesn't do anything for me. Where are those lists on the employees working for the check cashing firms? You put them in the file. Do you want them? Yeah. Give a couple of sheets to Asher. You take a couple and we'll check them. Oh, oh. Yeah? Now, here's the FBI kickback and the guy in the morgue van. He's got a record. Name's Frank Bishop, all right. Arrested in 1933 on a forgery rap and using the mails. Okay, Quine, bring it in, will you? Right. Nothing on this one. Hey, Ben. Huh? Here it is. The Martin Lyons Printing Company. Jules Harrison, 778 and a half North Spring. I knew I'd seen it. Could be Bishop's roommate. Uh, here's a kickback, Ben. Oh, thanks. Uh, take a couple of men and go over and check on 778 and a half North Spring. Man named Jules Harrison. Works for Martin Lyons Printing. Want to talk to him. All right. Aren't we going? We're going over to the printing company. I got a hunch he's still working for them. 
Asher. Yep. Go down and get old Sam. We'll want an identification. Go right in. Mr. Martin's expecting you. No, thank you. Let's go, Sam. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin, this is Sam Rogers. How do you do? Uh, hey, hey. Sam saw the man who killed Godfrey. We think maybe the man we want is working for you. Jules Harrison. Jules? Of course. He's been with the company for nearly ten years. Well, uh, we'd like for you to send for him, please. All right. Miss Williams. Will you ask Jules Harrison to come in, please? Yes, sir. What makes you think it was Harrison? Well, we spotted Godfrey's stolen car in a parking lot. The man who was driving it put up a fight and was killed. When we checked his address, we found it matched Harrison's. Maybe this other man was the one who killed Godfrey. No. Old Sam here says he wasn't. That's right, yes, you're absolutely right. That stiff in the morgue wasn't the one that killed that fellow and rolled him down the hill. No, sir, oh, no, that's for sure. He didn't do it. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Harrison is here. Send him in. Now, Sam, take a good look at him. Okay, Lieutenant. You want to see me, Mr. Martin? Yes, come in, Harrison. Yes, sir. Yes, sir? That's the fellow, Lieutenant. That's him. Oh, That's him. You're under arrest, Harrison. What do you mean I'm under arrest? I'm holding you on suspicion of murder. What That's is the fellow. He pulled the guy out of the car and he rolled him down the hill. Now, like wait a minute. Stay right there. Yeah, yeah. That's him, all right. These yeah. gentlemen are from the police, Harrison. So what? I haven't done anything. You know a man named Frank Bishop? Oh, I live with him, but I haven't... You know a man named Russell Godfrey? Sure. He used to work here. He got... Wait a minute. You don't think... Frank Bishop had Godfrey's car. Bishop is dead. What's that got to do with me? Bishop just lived with me. One of you made a mistake and cashed one of those checks on the wrong day. I think it was Bishop. I think he got scared and tried to skip town. I don't care what you think. I didn't have anything to do with it. This man saw you roll Godfrey's body out of his car. That's right. That's right. I saw you. You pushed him. Just pushed him right over that hill. We think you planned this whole thing with Bishop. You get the checks, Bishop forges them. You've been working here ten years, haven't you? Yeah. You'd know just what to do with those checks if you had a good forger to help you. How long have you known Bishop? He's been living with me for the last year. I took him in to help with the rent. He should never have cashed that check. Why did he cash it? I didn't mean to kill Godfrey. I waited on the road and he picked me up. I didn't mean to kill him. Bishop got scared and needed some money. All that planning and he ruined it just by cashing that lousy check. Okay. Let's go down to the station. Yeah, I guess it's just as much my fault. I, I didn't mean to kill Godfrey. Things like that happen, I guess, but I didn't mean to. Okay, let's go. Jail? Oh, I sure, young fella. Come on, come on. It's nearly four o'clock. We serve dinner in an hour. <laughs> Before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? <coughs> you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identification, call out the number. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs>